Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome. It's Nurse Richard the Wax Wizard. Uh, thanks for watching. Strap yourselves in. This one's a bit of an epic. <laughs> for those of you who like longer ones, uh, you're in for a treat. You're going to enjoy this one. It's a full, how long is it? It's about 16 odd minutes long. Um, it was a big one. Uh, two ears, same, same patient, lovely lady. Uh, you can see already, big, big, big flakes of skin coming out of this one. Um, now she came with the sun. You might be able to hear a bit of chatting in the background as it um, it went on that long that uh, me and him were having a bit of a chat in the tube bag as well. <laughs> um, and just look at all this skin coming away. Now, if you don't already know, oh, stay tuned for the ruler shot at the end as well. It's a good one. I did get one this time, thankfully. Um, I just had to because I was absolutely gobsmacked as to how much kept coming out of this ear, this ear. Well, in both ears. It, it was just humongous. And bear in mind, a fair amount of it disappears up the tube, like you've, you've already seen the first bits um, going up the tube. But yeah, it does. Some of those who've seen a lot of these videos before, you might be thinking, is it keratosis obturans? I don't think so, but it might be a, a precursor to it. Because if you don't already know, let me tell you, the majority of earwax, in most people anyway, is made up of, of dead skin that's shed, that's, that's trying to leave the ear. And um, it's mixed in with an oily substance as well. The majority of this does seem to be dead skin and it does present a little bit like keratosoptrans. And what that is, that's a condition where the skin just doesn't, it, it fails to leave the ear. It just, it dies, it sheds, it dies and it falls off where it is. Um, and then and what you can kind of get, they call it this matrix. So which it kind of has got a bit of this. So, and what that means is it's, it's the, the more freshly shed layer of skin will be on the outside, then the, the, the oldest skin will be on the inside and you get a difference in color from, from, from out to in. So you'll, you'll already have seen the paler dead skin, which is whitish in appearance around the outside of it. And then it'd be a bit darker and in the center of it, which you can already see there, it'll be very dark brown, if not black. Um, but the other, hall, the other hallmarks that you need to formally diagnose keratosoptrans really is is a bit of pain and possibly widening of the ear canal. Now she didn't have either of those, nothing obvious anyway. She didn't say she was in any pain at all. I don't think she'd ever had this done before. Um, uh, but there was no obvious or discernible widening as well. I suspect what might be happening here, the, you won't be able to tell this, but the ear canal's uh, uh, not completely closed shut, but it is extremely narrow. Uh, the exit to this ear. I'm propping it open with the endoscope. That's why you can see all this. Look at this big monstrous chunk coming out. Uh, so what might be, there you go. So I'm slowly moving the endoscope back and the ears kind of closing in on it. So look, you, you can just see how narrow that is there, can't you? So what might be happening here is while the skin's trying to shed and leave the ear, uh, it's just getting stuck at the outside ear at the very lateral aspect. That means the outer, the, the, the most the outermost part nearest to me um, it's just getting stuck there and then building up behind it because it's constantly traveling like a convey belt commonly described as and it's probably just building up behind that um, that said if I think if we didn't get this uh, now I think maybe in a relatively short space time it may well start giving us some pain uh, and, and possibly widening, and then you probably could diagnose it as keratosis drugs. But I think it actually is trying to leave the ear, it just can't, because, because it just gets stuck here, as it did here. Bit of a battle getting this through here, and I think in a bit, I asked the patient to uh, grab her ear and pull it upwards and outwards, and you see the difference, it goes from being really narrow like that to a lot more open like that. Should have done it earlier, truth be told, <laughs> it would have made it a bit easier. But I was just in the thick of it. There you go. So you can see the difference now, can't you? Looks a lot wider. And that's because she's literally pulling it quite firmly as well. Uh, but it makes it a lot easier for me to get this out. Um, but yeah, it is a long one. How far are we in there? Four minutes. Um, very deep down this goes, as does the other one. Quite a bit of stuff near the eardrum on this one that we had to get out. Big chunks. But it just keeps coming and coming and coming, just when you think, ah, that's got to be it then now. Um, it just, 
keeps on producing from from where it's coming you're thinking my word that must be nearly it now and every time you get to that point you're still going and you're like there's still more left see even that you'd think is that it and it's not this is the tricky bit down at the eardrum uh, where it does get a bit more delicate down here so i've swapped the fine end tube that's the smaller of the two and it's not going to look spotless as well this air canal afterwards not far off but it's not going to be completely spotless you can just see how messy this is can't you um i think she had been oiling it a bit but this is years and years and years worth and a lot asked me why don't people notice um they often don't until you kind of the, kind of call it the straw that breaks the camel's back so to speak you know you could have an ear that's 70 80 even 90 percent full you wouldn't know you might not notice too much of a problem you just think oh, i just can't hear as well as i used to and only when that last bit fills in that no sound can get through do people think oh maybe I, maybe there's something else going on here that i need to get checked out and that's why they usually end up um, at my door on my seat um, these last bits were really tricky because it, it, it wasn't all in one bit it was just uh, little flakes and chunks but it's obviously because of how deep it was and as you can see the entrance to the air completely closed so it's really difficult to get it to get in there so that's why you have to put the endoscope in and stretch it open uh, so you can get uh, get the other uh, so you can get the suction tube in now I was proper determined to get the majority of all of these here because it does look a bit retracted this eardrum the other one probably more so it's more evident uh, the other one um, when you do have an eardrum that's retracted some of this dead skin can collect in it and uh, start to form a ball and cystins actually start growing inwards and invading the the middle ear space that's called a, a cholesteatoma um, and quite a common spot to get them is is not far where i am now so that's why i think it's really important to try and get these bits here as tricky as it might be it is important to get them just to make sure that she's not got uh, a cholesterol i'm holding that in place to build up the suction because um, that's what happens when you when you when you latch onto it the power in the machine increases if you've ever stuck your hand over the top of the hoover uh, you'll you'll notice that an increase in the power in the machine and that therefore uh, increases the power then you can it, it holds on to it better So you can see I'm being ultra cautious and careful down here because this is the bony part of the ear. A lot of your regulars will know. The skin is incredibly thin. So if you make contact with that, your patient will know about it. So you've got to have a, a pretty steady hand. So you kind of keep dabbing it. Kind of try not to stay down there too long. You just kind of dip down and try and grab it and then pull away. And if it doesn't come away, then you retract a bit. Have another look have a reassess see where else you need to go now that was the spot at the top there that i was particularly keen to get because that's the area that you can get these cholesterolomas now i think i had to come back up and readjust a couple of times here just because um as you can probably see you can't see it now because the suction tube is in the way of it so i've got to have a little bit of a glimpse of it so you can get some perspective on how close you are to it so you can just about see the edge of it there. So very gently go closer, and there we go. To manage to get that and in that little pocket, it, it looks okay. There is another pocket on the other side as well that you can see. Now already at this point, the patient could hear a lot better. But let's just go and get, there's just a few bits tucked in around the corners there. Like I said, this one isn't gonna be spotless. But uh, you have to weigh out the pros and cons of staying this deep in someone's ear just to get little specks that are not going to make too much difference, you know. I'm already more than happy with what we've done, to be honest with you. And there's just a little bit stuck at the entrance here. It's glaring off that. It's quite bright. I had to turn it up bright because I was deep in the ear. See what you're doing as you're on the way out. It obviously reflects quite a bit of all that skin. 
but um, yeah, it does look a bit messy, but do you know what? From what it looked like before, and bearing in mind what's been in this here for a long time, I'm more than happy with that. Um, here's the other way, it came out a bit more, a bit more straightforward, this one. Um, thanks to all the regular watchers for all your comments and likes. Don't forget, if you do like these videos, I don't say this often, I always forget, um, then press that like button. And if you think you're white, it means it recommends it to more people, because there's lots of people who like watching this. Uh, and uh, if you like it, it recommends it to more people. So do it now. Press that button down there while you're watching it. it doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> Just helps me a little bit. Just uh, it makes it makes it more available to more people. Again, a lot of skin in this one as well. And um, if you want to drop a comment too, as a lot of your regulars will know, I do like to have a bit of a chat in the comments. I do read them all, um, even the weird ones. <laughs> Even the rude ones. Um, I got a funny one the other day. It said, um, can't understand the word you say him. <laughs> I didn't quite know what to say to that because, no, can't help me accent, can I? Let me accent if you don't know, it's from the, uh, from the north of England, from the northwest of England specifically. Um, the area's called, like, well, it's called Greater Manchester now, but we know it is Lancashire. It's in the uh, it's in the Wigan area. We don't mention the, the Wigan because it, it, it of sports rivals against it to town that I'm actually from. But more people will have heard of Wigan than than will have heard of Lee, which is the town I'm actually from. Um, but yeah, they, they, they said they couldn't understand a word. No, no, believe it or not, my accent is not that uh, it's not that broad. It's not that thick compared to a lot of people from where I'm from. It's considered a bit more of a posh accent, believe it or not. <laughs> Because there's, there's lots of different uh, areas of the towns that I'm from, and the one I was from and brought up in, probably one of the more affluent areas of that town. There are some parts of the town that you can go to, even just a mile or so away from where I was brought up, and I wouldn't be able to understand a lot of the, a lot of the people there. Their accents that thick, and I did, I did actually. I don't normally write things down or prepare, but I thought I will for this because I wanted. I did this in a video a long time ago. Might have been in the early twenties. Um, not the 1920s and the, tw the videos of the 20s uh, where I give some uh, common phrases that you can hear and see if you can figure out what they are but I'll tell you what they are but I just thought you might it's called local dialect um, I'm not going to keep talking about this because like I've said before there's only so many things you can say about earwax you can, have, you can watch it along and we'll have a bit of a chat so yeah I'll give you a, a, some, a few examples of some local dialect uh, the most common one uh, of a greeting here is uh, a up, or how do, how you doing, or or eat, uh, means are you all right, how are you doing, or you want to make it longer, at or eat, or eat, how's the diddling. Another one which gets uh, a lot of strange reactions is a up cock, or, or eat cocker, because believe it, that's a term of endearment round here, you refer to someone as cocker or cock. Obviously, not means something else wherever you might be in the world. It does mean that too here. Hopefully, that doesn't get me a strike on social media and get me get me a, a temporary ban. But it's 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 a term of uh, affection, term of endearment. All right, cock, how are you doing? Simple as that. <laughs> uh, when we go for something to eat, it's Friday today. You know, Friday is always chippy tea or takeaway tea. We go to the chippy, the chip shop. And there's a few things you can get there which you'll have never heard of. Uh, one's a babby's yed. Go and look up what that is or tell me what you think that might be. And you can have that with a bit of pee wet. Or you can have it with, uh, get some scraps on there as well. Or fish bits. And you can also get with your chips, you can have some Manchester caviar. Now if someone can tell me what that is, without Googling it, I will be very impressed. Some Manchester caviar. Um, but the town we're from, they call us lobby gobblers. Why do they call us lobby gobblers? Because lobby is the traditional dish around here. It's basically a corned beef uh, stew, corned beef hash, uh, without a crust. Um, it's just potatoes, corned beef, sometimes carrots, um, stewed. Proper pauper's tea, you know, <laughs> but we like it. Um, right, what are some other local sayings that you might like? Uh, sure up your cake hole. <laughs> you can imagine what that means. Be quiet. Uh, it's cowed means it's cold, uh, it's cowed. Uh, put what in thaw, 
That's a good one. He was, I don't know if you can figure out what that is. Put wood in thaw, it's cowed. Shut the door, it's cold. Put the wood in the hole. Put wood in thaw. When you, when you earth, it usually means it's short for the. Put wood in thaw. Um, and the opposite of cowed, it's, it's, um, it's cracking flags. It's that hot that it's cracking the, the, the flags, the pavement. <laughs> if you're tired, you're jiggered. Um, here's one. Um, what are you up to? Out and out. <laughs> you think, what the hell? Out and out. Uh, anything or nothing. What are you up to? Are you up to anything? Are you up to out? What are you up to? Note, nothing. Out or note. <laughs> if you're thirsty, you're spitting feathers. Uh, there's trouble at the mill. That's a good one. That means um, ooh, something's going down, something's going on when there's trouble at the mill. Because uh, it's a big cotton mill industry uh, around here. Uh, the women all worked down the worked at the cotton mills. The men all worked down the coal mines. That's kind of how it went. Um, managed to get all this out because um, I'm not cack handed. There's another one for you. Cack handed, not very skillful with your hands. Now you can see a big retraction pocket in there, can't you? Now I've referred this uh, this lady onwards uh, because of these retraction pockets um, because she does have some um, some oncology history here. Uh, now I would rather that get checked out. Uh, there's usually always a reason, other than the, it doesn't have to be simple eustachian tube dysfunction, you know, caused by a, a, a cold or a virus that is quite common, especially this time of year, but it is quite profoundly retracted, that one. So needs looking into anyway. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, along with some um, some of our local sayings that I thought you might uh, you might like to know about. I just wanted to give a quick shout out as well. Now, I know that some of you carry on watching when the, when the year's done, but I wanted to say thanks to all those people who support, comment. It does mean a lot to me. And I've written a few names down, and if your name's on it, great. If it's not, I do apologise. I can't read them all out, but I just wanted to give you a shout-out to say thanks, and I do appreciate it. So, and if you don't want to, uh, you don't listen out for your name, then feel free to scroll on by. Uh, but I've got thanks to Diane Burgess, Kate Smith, Darlene, Terry, Colleen, Karen Walker, Akila, Yolanda, Janice Newman, Lisa, Rob, Pippa, Robinette, Nancy, Sarah Frankham, always leaves a heart, uh, say hello to me one of these days, Joy, Lisa Gibbs, Sarah Scott, Susan Van Korbach, hope I pronounced that right, Kim Stull, Stull Marie Galotta, Angie Kay, Dendy Wees, I don't know what your real name is, Dendy, but hi, thanks for commenting, uh, Jeannie, Sukin, Anita Phillips, Sue La Victoire, I hope I pronounced that right as well. Um, but thanks to all of you and thanks to anybody who leaves a comment or a like or watches in general anyway I'll try and give some more shout outs in a bit but anyway hope you enjoyed that but for now take care of yourself and I will see you soon bye bye